Hello YouTube! For this video we're going to be working on graphing transformations of tangent and cotangent. Uh, as you'll see pretty quickly, this is very similar to graphing transformations for any trigonometric function, uh, and we'll be looking for a lot of the same stuff. Some you know, minor differences that you'll notice is that uh, the A, rather than giving us uh, what we call the amplitude, this is going to give us key values at what I call the quarter points. Uh, like before, it will tell us if we need to flip the graph over the x-axis. B will still give us information about the period. C will give us information about the phase shift. And D will give us information about the vertical shift. Make note that with tangent and cotangent, the period is found by taking pi and dividing it by the absolute value of B. This is because the regular period of tangent and cotangent is only pi, so that's why we're using that instead of 2 pi, like we would for sine or cosine. All right, so let's get into some examples where we start reading the different transformations and seeing what happens in the graph. Uh, the first of these that we'll try is three multiplied by tangent of x. And up in the corner here, I have just a small graph of what tangent looks like so that we can reference it. The three out here, that would be our a value. And what that's really doing is it's stretching our graph out. So we have these key points at the, the quarter values at one and negative one. And since things are being stretched out, they'll be at three and negative three. Since we have no other transformations, everything else will be exactly the same. As you go to graph this out on your own, probably start off by putting in your asymptotes. This will give you a good reference on where you need to put the rest of the graph. So here I have my asymptotes. Uh, we're not shifting it left or right, so I'm just gonna mark these out at negative pi over two and positive pi over two. All right, we'll draw in the basic shape of the graph. It has kind of that S shape to it. We like it, good. And of course, the middle of this would be right at zero. And I'm also gonna put in a small uh, line that represents our x-axis. That way I can really represent that I'm going from this point up three and down three to find those key values. So this would be up at three. This is down at negative three. Uh, and that'd be a good representation of what this graph looks like. Uh, if you wanted to take this a little bit further, maybe mark out a few more points, you could actually mark out where these quarter values are. This one would be at pi over four, and this one would be at negative pi over four. So now I can see that, yep, at this value I'm at three, at this value I'm down here at negative three, uh, and for this one I could even draw in the y-axis, but I'm not going to because it, can, it, it makes things look just a little bit messy. All right, let's move on to the next one. This one has an a value of one, but it's negative. So it's gonna take our usual graph of tangent and actually just flip it over. Let's start with our asymptotes. And we'll go ahead and keep them at the same place of negative pi over two and pi over two, because we're not moving it left or right. Now we wanna think of the basic graph of tangent, but really just flipping it over the x-axis. So it's going to look more like cotangent. So more like that. All right, for this one, nothing else has really changed. So we'll go ahead and put in our x-axis at zero. And our, our quarter values would be simply up at one and down at negative one. And of that, that would happen at pi over four and negative pi over four. So just a nice simple flip. All right, one last one, tangent of four x. Let's get started with our asymptotes. and figure out what that 4x does. Uh, that four is our value of b. So you want to imagine taking pi, dividing it by four, and that will give us our new period. So the distance between our asymptotes is exactly pi over four, that's what it's telling us. Now to actually figure out where these asymptotes are located, we wanna think of the center being at zero, like it was before, and then going half the period to the right and half the period to the left. So half of pi over four would be at pi over eight. So there's that asymptote. And half the period the other way would be at negative pi over eight. So we can really see that it has changed the period. Uh, no flips in here, so let's go ahead and just draw a tangent like it normally is. Done. And it's not being moved up or down, so let's go ahead and put the center right at zero. And our quarter key values at one and negative one, and there's our graph of tangent. 
So I'm not drawing in the y-axis for any of these, but for these you can imagine it right at the center. Um, and you'll see why I'm not drawing it in, especially when we start moving this to the left or to the right, uh, but you do want to know where it's located. All right, so those all look pretty good. Let's move on to some examples of cotangent and do some more transformations. Uh, so like before, up here in the corner I have a graph of cotangent, so we can use that as a reference. And this one uh, looks like we have a value that's being subtracted on the inside. That would be our value of C. So we get pi divided by 3. Now we'd take that value divided by B to see exactly where things are being shifted to. For our value of B, this is essentially that 1 in front of X. So I'm really just saying we are going to shift things to the right by pi over 3. All right, so how do we do that? Well, on to our asymptotes. The first asymptote that I really want to mark out is that one that used to be at zero. So things are being moved to the right, so the new location of that particular asymptote is now at pi over three. And now I want to use the period to figure out where the next one is located. Uh, since we're not messing around with the period, the period will simply be pi, so I can take pi over 3, add pi, and then figure out where that other asymptote is located. Let's see, pi over 3 plus pi. Uh, get a nice common denominator, so uh, we need a common denominator of 3. So 3 pi over 3, and that would give us 4 pi over 3. So now we know where the new one is located, at 4 pi over 3. And just as a double check, if you were to uh, subtract these to figure out the distance between them, you'd get 3 pi over 3, or just pi, uh, which is exactly our original period in the first place. So that's good. All right, everything else is the same here, so let's go ahead and just draw in our graph of cotangent. It has the curve going the other way from tangent. Definitely want to keep that in the back of our mind. The center of this uh, is right along the x-axis, so that's at 0. And our quarter values up one, down one, would be exactly the quarter points in here. Not bad. Now, of course, we haven't really marked off a whole lot on the x-axis, but you could by simply using your period and adding and subtracting appropriately. So we added pi to get all the way over here, but if we added just pi over 2, we'd be exactly halfway. So pi over 3 plus pi over 2, that'll figure out where it actually crosses the x-axis here. A uh, common denominator for this one would be 2 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6. So it looks like it hits at 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. So the entire period is pi. We added pi over 2. If I add pi over 4, then I'll figure out this first quarter value. Pi over 3 plus pi over 4. A uh, common denominator here, 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. Looks like it happens at 7 pi over 12. Not bad. All right, let's do one more transformation and then get into those harder examples. So with this one, we have our asymptotes. But I don't have any shifting left or right. Our C value is simply 0. So you can imagine our asymptotes being at the exact same places that they were before. So if I, I'm just doing one period here between 0 and pi, nothing's going to change. Uh, what is going to change is rather than things being right at 0 on the x-axis, things have been moved up by 5. So I want to imagine my center point, you know, where I've usually been building these things, and really think of it not at 0, but this thing's been moved up, it is now at 5. All right, and now that I have that, let's go ahead and sketch in our graph of cotangent. So it looks something like that. Uh, if we want some more values in here, let's see, I'd end up with pi over two. This would be pi over four. One, four, two, four, three pi over four, it looks good. And so now I know where my quarter points are located. Uh, now for this one, we don't have an A value, so I'd simply start at 5 and go up 1, start at 5 and go down 1, and that would give me the location of these guys. So up at 6, down at 4. All right, and there's one period of cotangent. Not bad. Now, for these ones, really note why I haven't put in the Y axis. Like for this one, it has a Y axis, but it's actually over here 
if you want to mark it in. This one also has a y-axis and it happens to be right here, but I'm trying to emphasize where that asymptote is, so that's why I haven't really drawn it in. All right, on to a difficult example. For this one, we have lots of different transformations in here, so we want to spend just a little bit of time figuring out what all of these numbers are doing and then carefully plot them on a graph. All right, let's start off at the beginning. Let's start off with A. A, we get a value of 2 thirds, and that's the number being multiplied right in front of tangent. Uh, it's positive, so we're not flipping it, but it is going to affect where our key values are, uh, essentially up 2 thirds or down 2 thirds. Moving on to B. B is the number in front of x, so it's simply a 2, and it helps us figure out our period by taking pi, dividing it by 2, that way we know how often it cycles. All right, so we got B, on to C. C, I'm going to say, is a negative 6 pi. I'm saying it's negative because normally we think of uh, having x minus the value of c. Since it's positive, I'm thinking x minus a minus 6 pi, and sure enough, that's why I'm getting that value. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, this is for our phase shift, so we want to take the value of c and divide it by b. So I get negative 3 pi phase shift, uh, or I could say to the left by 3 pi, and that'll work out just fine. All right, so we have that. Uh, now what else do we need? D, how far up and down are we going? Uh, these are things added or subtracted on the outside. I have a negative two, so we are going down two. All right, so that's a lot of good information. Now let's get into graphing it. And the first thing I really want to consider when graphing it is where has the center moved when I'm shifting it left to right? Uh, the center of my tangent used to be right at zero, used to be. And then of course I'd go pi over two in, into the right, pi over two to the left, and I'd find my asymptotes. But the new center of this thing is no longer at zero. It looks like we are shifting to the left at negative three pi. So that's where I'm going to start building things for the center of tangent. Now we'll use our period to figure out where these asymptotes are located. Keep in mind that the entire distance is pi over two. So if I just want half that distance, I need to chop the period in half. So we would think of pi over four this way and pi over four that way. All right, let's do that. So negative three pi plus pi over four. So this one will need a common denominator as well. We will multiply the top and bottom by four. And this tells us that our first asymptote, uh, it happens at negative 11 pi over four. Not bad. So we can also do this and subtract pi over four and figure out where the other asymptote's located. So we see it's pretty much the same process, uh, negative 12 pi minus pi, now I'm getting at negative 13 pi all divided by four. Okay, so we have uh, our asymptotes. All right, so now that we've taken care of our shift and this really encodes information about our period, now we can do the shifting up and down part. So I wanna think of the center of this, you know, where that tangent would normally go through. That would normally be at zero, but everything is being shifted down too. So let's draw another little dotted line here and say this is at negative two. Now from here, we could go up or down two thirds to figure out our key values. So let's go ahead and put in a couple little notches here. So negative two plus two thirds, and that would give us this value here. So let's see, a common denominator here. Looks like we need to multiply the top and bottom by three. So negative six thirds plus two thirds. That'll give us a negative four thirds. And going in the other direction, trying to figure out what that one is, negative six thirds minus two thirds, so negative eight thirds. All right, so let's put all of this together and see what we get. So this is giving us the center of uh, where tangent is located. I have these quarter points and where those are located. And now we can just draw in our graph of tangent. So it goes through those key values, hugs really close to the asymptotes, and there would be our graph of tangent. 
Now, if you wanted to graph out your axes, then you'd really have to keep in mind what our scale is. So this is way down at negative two. Our x-axis is actually way up here. Our y-axis is way over here. Um, in fact, we might draw out a few more periods of this just to see where it lines up with that y-axis if we were to go down even further. All right, not bad. All right, let's do one more difficult example, then we'll call it good. This one will be 1 minus 3 multiplied by cotangent of x minus 3 pi over 2. All right, starting off with a. a is the number multiplied out front. I see it's a negative 3. So since it's negative, we are going to imagine flipping this. That means it's going to look more like the graph of tangent. Also, since we're getting this value of 3, it's going to tell us our quarter points. We're essentially going to go up 3 and down 3 to build them. B is our number in front of x, it's just a one. So now we have information about our period, pi divided by one or simply pi is our period. Okay, that looks good. On to C. C is a three pi over two. And we'd take that value divided by B to figure out our phase shift. Since B is equal to one, it's just simply going to be three pi over two. So we need to go to the right. One last value, the value of D. That's coming from this one out here. It's a positive one, so everything is going up one. So lots of good information here on to graphing what it looks like, or at least one period of it. So this is the asymptote I like to start with cotangent because it used to be at zero. Um, and that's kind of how I was building the one for tangent as well. I'd find zero and figure out how far it's being shifted left or right. So zero in, in for cotangent happens to be right at an asymptote. And everything here is being shifted to the right. So this is now going to be at three pi over two. Now to figure out the next one, I'm going to use the period. So this entire distance has to be a distance of pi. So three pi over two plus pi. Then we can get a common denominator here by multiplying the top and bottom by two. So it looks like the new one is located at five pi over two. Five pi over two, perfect. Now, if I only wanted to find the center, then rather than adding an entire distance of pi, then I'd simply add pi over two. So three pi over two plus pi over two would give us four pi over two. So there's like our little middle of this entire thing. So we've taken care of our shift, and we've also encoded information about our period. That looks great. Now I want to think of where is the center of cotangent? It's not at zero anymore. In fact, it's been moved up one. So let's draw another little horizontal line. This is now at one. Now from this value, we could figure out our quarter points by going up three and down three. So one plus three would be at four, and down three would be at negative all right, so that's a lot of good information. We can actually start to sketch in what cotangent looks like. Now, normally cotangent would have this wonderful S shape kind of starting at the top and then going to the bottom right, but things have been flipped here. So we wanna take that entire graph and flip it over our line. So let's go actually uh, say it goes through the center and mark out these quarter points here and draw it like that. There we go. So now we have our quarter points in here. We have our flip. Uh, we've shifted it over the right amount. It has the right period. And this is a, a really good graph of just one period of cotangent. And of course we could continue out uh, even further if we really wanted to, but this really gives us a lot of information. All right, if you had to graph in your axes, your X axis is just a little bit below this line and your Y axis it looks like we'd have to truck back to the left. It's more over here. All right. So you can see that with graphing tangent and cotangent, even if they have transformations, it feels a lot like graphing uh, transformations on just regular sine and cosine. You're still looking for key things that you can uh, build your graph from. And one of the major things you're going to build your graph for tangent and cosine is going to be using those asymptotes. Find where those are first, uh, that way you get a good idea of where one period of the graph uh, resides. All right, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.